Uh, at the back of the book is a table of thermodynamic data for selected substances at room temperature. We're going to browse through the CP values in the table and check that they account for most of them using the equipartition theorem. Okay, um, in this question, I'm going to run through a basic review and uh, derivation of CP and CV. Um, and then from there on, I will go and uh, uh, derive uh, different CPs for uh, solids, liquids, and gases, compare them to the table in the book, and then uh, make the appropriate conclusions. Uh, to start, uh, we know that the heat capacity is equal to Q uh, divide the uh, the uh, uh, is equal to Q the heat divided by delta T. How much heat do I need to make a delta T change in temperature? That's called the heat capacity. Um, now I know from the first law of thermodynamics that the amount of heat is equal. Uh, is basically uh, how much uh, uh, difference there is between the internal energy and the work that is done by the system. So this would be W U minus uh, the work. How much the work done by the gas will take away from uh, the change in the internal energy or set, uh, put it another way, the change in the internal energy of the system has to do with the heat that's going into the system plus the amount of work that the gas is doing or being done on by the system or uh, on the system okay so if I plug this in here I will get C equal Delta U minus the work divided by Delta T okay so now uh, two things can happen um, the uh, if there is uh, like for example for sol uh, if if there's no change uh, in the volume uh, of a gas uh, that means there's no work done on the system and uh, that means since the work is uh, minus integral PDV uh, if 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 this guy is zero uh, that means that there's no change in the volume dv equals zero and the volume does not change and uh, so when the volume does not change we call this c so this so then this work goes to zero and we call this cv which is the heat capacity at a constant volume and it simply boils down to delta u over uh, delta t at constant volume since uh, v equals zero okay um, the other thing that can happen so this is uh, this is our CV okay now uh, the other thing that can happen of course is uh, for most gases uh, when you heat them they expand and uh, in that case uh, they do work on their surroundings um, and if they do work on the surroundings uh, then the work will be negative uh, and uh, C will be large because then it will add to the equation and C will actually be larger than CV and uh, so uh, however if the pressure uh, surrounding the system remains constant uh, then uh, we have a new term we call it uh, the specific heat at constant pressure okay and this will involve this will involve a constant pressure so this guy can come out right and uh, then this will be uh, delta u minus and the work is minus p delta v and then we divide this by delta t and so uh, this will be and and i'm doing this at uh, constant pressure now if these changes are infinitesimal and small i can uh, change the i can convert the changes into partial derivatives so this would be du over dt at constant pressure plus uh, p dv over dt at constant pressure
Okay, now uh, we've already discussed uh, that uh, for uh, the uh, substances uh, where the thermal energy uh, is stored in quadratic degrees of freedom, right? Uh, we know that the equipartition theorem says that you, oops, if this can write, that you is equal to uh, one half f n k t number of molecules uh, Boltzmann constant temperature degree f stands for the degrees of freedom assuming that f is independent of the uh, uh, temperature and uh, 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 from this I can find out what CV is because uh, this just turns out to be uh, I could rewrite this as if in a partial derivative format that C which I forgot to do here du over dt at constant volume so from this I can figure out the specific heat at constant volume so this would be uh, CP CV if I take the partial derivative with respect to temperature of this expression uh, so basically I'm taking the derivative of just t which is 1 the rest remains the same so the answer here will be 1 half n f k okay and we know that uh, n k is the same thing as small n r so this is 1 half n r f uh, where small n this here is the number of moles of the gas. Okay, um, now uh, R is of course the gas constant. Now, uh, if we have an ideal gas uh, at constant temperature uh, sorry at constant pressure so P is fixed uh, I could easily uh, figure out what CP is right and uh, I could also find out what dV over dt is because uh, the ideal gas law is PV equals nK or let me write it as nKT so that means P is equal to nKT over V and if I try to I'm gonna find CP so I need dv over dt oops I meant to put this here and this here solve for v so dv over dt at constant pressure will equal I can pull the constants out n k over p d over dt of t which is 1 so the answer here will be n k over p and so now if I plug this result into my CP formula I will get CP to equal uh, du over dt at constant pressure plus the pressure times n k over the pressure so these two guys can cross out and uh, I get uh, CP to equal now uh, du over dt uh, uh, is the same thing as uh, uh, the, I mean the 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 derivative du over dt is the same with p fixed as with p fixed as with v fixed. Uh, uh, 
so um, uh, so we can we can replace this equation with du over dt at fixed volume plus nk right it's uh, Uh, because from the equipartition theorem, there's neither of these terms appear in the equation one half f n k t. So that's why I can make this replacement. And uh, I know here that this term is C V. So therefore, in the case of an ideal gas law, C P turns out to be C V plus n k. For an ideal gas law. Uh, sorry, I mistyped here. This is capital N. Okay, um, and so now uh, remember, I've already got for my CV up here to equal uh, one half uh, N R F. So I will replace uh, this. Uh, this is this guy here is the same thing as uh, N R. So uh, C P is C V plus N R, and uh, I know that C V turned out to be one half N R F. plus nr so if I factor an r I get CP to equal uh, f over 2 plus 1 okay uh, well uh, nr uh, r is the gas constant and we're talking about uh, one mole here so uh, so this is the same thing as 8.31 f over 2 plus 1 okay so basically it comes down to make the comparison in the table in the back of the book it comes down to comparing uh, things based on the degree of freedom that they possess so uh, let's start with each cate cat category separately because different things will have different degrees of freedom so if we start with uh, monoatomic gases uh, for monoatomic gases uh, we know that uh, F in that case will be uh, 3 there's 3 degrees of freedom and uh, if we plug this into our final formula here Uh, this is our final formula uh, so I'm going to be using this to make the comparison and uh, if I do that I get uh, CP to be uh, 3 over 2 let me plug this stuff in uh, 3 over 2, 1, 5 over 2, 2.5 times 8.31, which turns out to be 20.775. Uh, and if we look in the table, uh, in the back of the book, we could see that this agrees with uh, monoatomic gases, sort of like helium and neon. If you look, it agrees with those values. Now for uh, diatomic gases, uh, we have translational. So for monoatomic gases, we had three degrees of freedom translational. Here we have diatomic gases, we have translational and rotational so here f will equal 5 there's 3 translational and 2 rotational 
uh, the the atom cannot the molecule cannot rotate about uh, the axis penetrating through it for reasons that has to do with quantum mechanics so there would be two rotational and three translational so that makes it five and if I plug into that highlighted formula there uh, CP turns out to be uh, seven halves times eight point three one uh, we get twenty nine point zero eight five uh, and if we look in the table uh, yeah this is so this was somewhat close to helium and argon uh, this is in close to uh, CO uh, you can look up those and N2 okay okay now uh, for uh, let's go to solids and liquids uh, uh, for uh, solids and liquids so for a solid uh, there are uh, uh, F equals 6 technically 6 degrees of freedom uh, especially if the, so if the atoms are locked uh, in a crystal lattice uh, uh, usually there's more than that usually there is nine but only some contribute so so F would equal six in these kind of solids and uh, we know that uh, the volume does not change much um, for most solids and liquids actually so DV over DT at constant pressure is very small is very small and so if we take that into consideration here uh, all we have is du over dt because we're not counting the second term and uh, we already said uh, that this is uh, 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 du over dt will just be uh, one half nrf and uh, so this would be uh, f over 2 so this would be F over 2 approximation uh, 1 half F times uh, 8.31 uh, for one mole and uh, if we plug this in uh, we get CP to equal uh, so for 6 this would be 3 times 8.31 24 uh, about 24.93 and if we look at the table uh, this is quite close to some uh, 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 metals uh, uh, like aluminum uh, and lead uh, however if you look uh, for more complex compounds things as a bit more complicated and uh, th 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 this formula may not apply very well so I hope that this analysis uh, uh, would help people uh, get an intuitive sense and a scientific um, uh, uh, scientific uh, perspective on how to go about uh, deriving uh, different things holding some things constant varying others to uh, make use of the heat capacity in different ways and apply it to different uh, phases this concludes this question